Lovely. Good morning, everybody. Let's start again. How are you guys today? I am very excited because we've got two big announcements to make today. Um, we are going to be competing slightly with the potters next door because they're slapping their clay about. And I, it does make me laugh because it does sound like someone's getting beaten up next door. Um, so, yes, today. Now, you might have seen the email out yesterday or uh, have noticed that we have a new pattern. And this is her. This is our Perdita pinafore dress. Now, I really like this one because it is so versatile. Yeah, Do you want me to pull her out? The there we go. Hopefully um, you can see her a bit better. Oh. I'll tell you what, let me move these back. There we go. There she is. That's better. There she is, yes. So, this is Perdita. It's a really nice, easy pinafore dress. It just kind of skims everywhere, so you're not going to get, it's not a fitted one, because we don't do fitted really. Um, I'm built for comfort, not speed these days. Um, and, oh, let's see who we've got. Oh, brilliant, everyone's here, that's lovely. Apologies for the beatings going next door, <laughs> that's okay. Now, I love this because it is such a straightforward pattern. Now, we've made it in jumbo cord, but actually you can make it in loads of different kinds of fabrics which we are going to explore today. Are you able I will. Which one? This one? Yeah, Would you want it here? Yeah. Is that better? Yes. Now we can actually see all of it. I'm being directed this and morning. I can zoom in a bit. There we go. Good. Um, it has a slightly drop waist which makes it a little bit less kind of right nipping on your waist kind of thing. I quite like that dropped waist sort of look. Um, and it has got buttons down the side. So it opens, if I pull her arm up out the way, so you've got buttons all the way down the side that go into a lovely little cutaway pocket, which is really nice. And she's got pockets on the back as well. So there's pockets on the bum there too. You can't have too many pockets. You can't have too many pockets. You're absolutely right there, Charlie Bud. Um, we've paired her with the snug t-shirt which is absolutely perfect for this it's a lightweight t-shirt kind of top that goes beautifully underneath anything else which is really really lovely um, I've got a denim version and I'm going to move her back out of the way again now there we go this is another version that we photographed so this is the denim version and you can see it's got Top stitching detail on it so if you're into top stitching and making a feature of that kind of stuff this is a brilliant pattern and it was going to work really well for that um, you can see the pockets in a bit more detail on the back there which is looking rather good so I'm looking at oh brilliant Tina's already got hers and she's got buttons which is fantastic thank you I love that you guys are so quick off the mark aren't you this is brilliant We've all got loads of new comments here. Uh, no, Donna doesn't do fitted either. No, I totally get where you're coming from there. Morning, Delleth. Hi, Lynn. Uh, oh, there we go. Whoa, da, da, da. Yep, Lou, hope you can see the back. We've turned her around for you. Uh, Kate Evans says, lovely mum's sewing machine. Mum's sewing machine on Insta says that is gorgeous. Oh, brilliant. Yes, it would, Emma. It would look absolutely perfect in linen. I haven't featured linen at the moment because I thought, you know what, we're not maybe not quite there yet. Um, so we've got some beautiful denims, cords, cotton stretches and things like that that would work fantastically with Perdita. Uh, oh, Sue says, where does the seam come across the front? It comes just underneath your waist. So it doesn't, it doesn't sit on your waist, it's slightly dropped. So you've got that kind of lo lo low slung kind of pockets, which is quite nice. So you can see on here, this is her waist here. It's about, I would say, probably about five, six centimetres below the natural waistline. There we go. Oh, Tina says, I've just been waiting for the code. I've ordered the blue linen. Oh, nice. That's going to be lovely. Uh, Sue says, lovely pattern printing as you speak. Fabulous. So don't forget, ladies, free PMP until midnight tomorrow. That way you can also get... Now, it does come as a printed pattern. So that would be one of our normal patterns. So with the booklet and in the lovely card wallet. We also do it as a PDF. So you can download that and print it out at home if you want to. 
It's also part of the PDF printing service. Now, I can't remember what size you need to order on the printing service, but it will be listed under the categories. So you just need to type in what size pattern, i.e. the amount of paper, whether it's a small, I can't remember now, small, medium, large, extra large, um, Sharon will put in the comments in a sec, I'm sure, which one you'd need to order because I can't remember. Um, but then we can print off the pattern for you and post that out to you. Now, remember, there have been a few, a few comments in the Facebook um, friends group about the PDF pattern coming just in a, in a pink envelope. The thing about it is the whole PDF pattern thing is we're trying to save paper basically, um, and make it easier for you to be able to download at home. And a lot of people will just have the PDF pattern that they can download at home and print off on A4 sheets. We do it also as an A0 size. So you could, if you've got a bigger access to a bigger printer, or you could use other, another copy shop, they will print that out for you on A0 sized sheets. Um, and then you've got the PDF instructions. So a lot of people don't bother to print out the instructions. They just have them on their phone or their laptop or their tablet next to them as they're sewing, which is a really good way. And it just saves a bit of paper. You know, we're thinking of the trees, really. Um, but if you want a paper pattern and you don't want to worry about trying to print it out at home, we can do that for you. And that's where the PDF printing service comes in. So if you've ordered the PDF pattern and you've got the download instructions at home, you can then order the paper pattern to be printed by us. And all we do then, again, to save paper, is to just fold that up and pop it in one of our pink envelopes, which are compostable or recyclable. And that way we're just saving and trying to do our little bit for the planet. So I hope that makes sense because I know that there've been a few queries um, and questions flying around about that. So I hope that kind of clears everything up for you. Kate Evans on oh. Instagram, could you make it longer as a midi length? Absolutely, that's exactly what I've done with this one. So this kind of, all I've done is add about three inches onto the length of this um, and it makes it sort of mid-calf kind of length. So it sits just above my boots, um, but below my knee. So halfway below my knee and my ankles, really. Um, and there are instructions on how to do that in the online course that we've got as part of the sewing studio. So again, if you're a member of the sewing studio, you will have access to the PDF and the course as part of your subscription. So if you have kind of, uh, if you've not been with us for a while, or if you've kind of let, let your membership lapse, come back because there's loads and loads of stuff in there. We've got lots of tutorials and things like that going into the studio. The vast majority of them have dropped in uh, yesterday. What we're gonna try and do now with the sewing studio is put everything in on the first of the month. And that way you've got the whole month then to be able to enjoy everything that we are putting in there for you. So I hope that makes sense. Another question from Ooh. Morris Dancer 20. Would it be okay in a fairly stiff Sean Bray denim? Yes, perfect. Absolutely perfect. So what I'm going to do is show you some of the fabrics that are going to work with this. Now I've used this um, denim. It has a little bit of a stretch to it, but it is quite a sturdy fabric. It's quite a structured but because there's no fitting involved, you can get away with a lighter weight fabric like our linens, our wash laundered linens, which would be perfect for the summer. But right now, we're kind of wanting something that will kind of be a bit transitional. So something from you know, chillier weather that you can layer things up with that will take you through into the spring. So let's have a look at the fabrics. Actually, I'm just gonna have a quick look at... Oh, okay. Someone's already clocked onto the diploma. I will get that sorted for you. Um, I think what we need to do is to make it so that anybody can apply. Okay, don't worry. Diploma thing we will come up to in a second, but I will come back to that, don't worry. Let's talk about fabrics first. Now, I probably did show you this last week, the bright pink denim. I can't remember whether I did or not. Um, so. Yes, but this is perfect. If you want, if you are into your colours and you like a bit of cheeriness and bright colours to kind of set you up for the day, this pink denim is going to be absolutely perfect for the Perdita. I love it. It's proper lipstick pink and it's beautiful. It has that teeny bit of stretch. So 
you've got that in there and that's going to give you a little bit more comfort there as well, which is absolutely ideal. Um, oh, now let's have a quick look. We've got loads of questions here. I think I'm going to have to go back over these. Um, any questions about fabric quantities, you should be able to see the back of the pattern information on the website. So you should be able to have um, an idea of fabric quantities there. Um, Oh, Wendy Parker says, I think it's a medium. Presumably that's the one that you need to print off. Now, again, we've done this pattern in our two size ranges. So we've got the misses and we've got the curvy. So check your body measurements. Now, uh, that way you'll be able to work out which one you want. Now, you'll know as well, because you should be able to understand your own body shape as to whether or not you can get away with where you are okay with, with our patterns, which will probably be fine for the misses range. Or if you kind of, if you know, and you are slightly more Juno-esque, shall we say, then you might be better off with a curvy range. So have a little look at the, the body measurements before you double check which size you want to get. Um, there we go. So Sharon's has popped up. So the missus is medium and the curvy is large for the PDF printing service. Don't worry, Kate, I'm coming back to the diploma. Um, Oh, somebody says, what top and trousers are you wearing? <laughs> I know, I shouldn't be wearing a perdita today, shouldn't I? Um, these are a pair of just corduroy trousers uh, that may or may not be coming out as a new pattern. I don't know yet. And this is just a Julia top. So in um, some of the Japanese seersucker that we used to have in stock. So I'm rehashing things this morning. Uh, Oh, there we go. Tina says, I'm wanting it a bit longer. So I've ordered two and a half. Is that enough? That should be fine, Tina, actually. That should be brilliant. Um, Brenda says, and convert extend into dungarees. If that's the way you want to go, Brenda, why not give it a go? Why not give it a go? Um, oh, Amanda says, not done any sewing for ages, but went to the studio and love the new content. Thank you, Amanda. We are working really, really hard on trying to make sure that we've got new stuff going in there. So that's really good. Um, Nikki, I've just got my baby lock. Ooh. Hoping all my fabrics, patterns and threads arrive today from you. Would like to thank Sharon for all her help. Lots of silly sewing. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Nikki, for your order. That was brilliant. Hopefully it will be with you very soon. Um, uh, lovely. Amy, oh, you've got your email. That's fantastic. That's good. Luanne says, can't make to make the dress. It is a dungaree hack, though, Jules. Just give me a chance. Give me a chance. We've got lots of ideas for different things coming up, too. Um, oh, no, you've had your appendicitis out. I remember that. I had that when I was 14. Oh, it's not nice. Not nice. But back to fabrics, because this is what we're here for, really. So pink denim would be amazing. And I really love it with a bright coloured paisley t-shirt fabric underneath sharon's going to start putting up some of the links at the moment so you'll be able to get your fabrics and don't forget to use your pmp code which is really good i love this pink now actually i think that works brilliantly with it can you imagine having a really brun fight bright can't get my words out this morning fun a bright color t-shirt underneath a bright pink um I think that would look amazing. I love that. I think that's great. Um, there we go. Sharon's already popped it up. Paisley forever. There we are. Um, now, I've got this plain pink here because I think actually that works quite nicely with the olive denim. So pink and green, maybe not colours that you would normally put together, but actually I think they really work. Um, alternatively, you could have a pair of bright pink leggings that would go underneath your Perdita dress, which would look really good. Oh, Sue says, can you zoom in on the fabrics? We'll try and do that for the next ones. Yes. Oh, you have been. Good. Good, good, good. I'm, I'm, see, I'm getting ahead of myself um, now. Someone on Insta is asking what the code is. The code is, um, now we normally, it's, it's free PMP March 02. So that's the free PMP code. Um, if, you go on to if you go onto Facebook, Facebook, you'll be able to see the code on the Facebook because that's usually pinned at the top of the post. And isn't it on the email? And it will be on the email so as well. If people are signed up to the email, they'll get that. Did you see? I said that without moving my lips. Did you see that? That was really good, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I need to grow a beard now, don't oh, I? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. I think it's really nice together. Now this 
I love this because this goes brilliantly with that olive as well. But you could put it with the pink. And I think that works equally well, actually. I quite fancy a pair of, um, quite fancy a pair of leggings in this. It's a bit bonkers, but I think with um, a nice pair of sandals or plimmies, as what they used to be called. Do you remember plimmies from school, plimpsoles? Um, I suppose now they're called Converse, aren't they really? I'm showing my age now, <laughs> but there we are. Um, I really like those too. I'm gonna move those out of the way so we've got a bit more space. So let's pop those down there. Now, another one in the green set. I love this. This, is, this corduroy is beautiful. It's the same cord that we've used in the sample dress, but the colour is just gorgeous. It has this real kind of depth to it. It's almost, it's very similar to the hunter's green that we've got in the linen, but just a fraction more yellow um, and I think this is beautiful the colors I mean green actually goes with loads I've put it with pink today but obviously we've got loads of other fabrics that would work just as well with this and I think it's lovely one of the planes that you could put with it if you just wanted a plain t-shirt underneath is the sage t-shirt fabric so this is just a single jersey um, and again, it's a really nice quality, this one. It's got loads of stretch in it, so it'd be perfect. Same fabric as this, but just a different colour. Uh, oh. Mary says, Jules, you missed my question. Never done a pinafore before. Would you have to do an FBA on a pinafore? Um, to be honest, you probably won't need to. It isn't that fitted. If you are worried about... Um, needing an FBA, I would always, always twirl it up first. You don't need to do the whole thing, but just make up the bodice part of it. Try that over you with the straps and just see what you need to do. Now it has got a dart, so it does make it easier if you need to do any alterations, but to be honest, you probably won't need to unless you're, I don't know, like a size eight with a, I don't know, a G cup or something like that. Um, if you're very kind of front heavy, but you'll probably be all right without one, to be honest. Uh, a comment from Maria B. Love to Stitch. Uh, can't wait to order this pattern. I knew I would love it. I saw the buttons in bed. Oh, yes. We did give you a little, didn't we? Um, I hope that's okay, Murray. Uh, oh, Amos is looking forward to some sewing time when the kids are back at school next week. How many people are going to be in that position? How many people are going to be jumping for joy when they take their kids off to school next week. Not that you don't miss the little darlings, of course, but I'm sure everybody is looking forward to that, um, which will be rather good because it means more time for sewing. Uh, Rachel, will you be getting more of the grey needle cord? We are trying to get it in, Rachel. At the moment, trying to get hold of fabrics is really hard. Um, everything is taking 10 times as long to come into the country. Unfortunately, we're dealing with the Brexit situation again, um, and that's having an impact on us getting fabrics, but we are trying. Um, we've got more stuff starting to make its way through now, which is really, really good. In fact, we've got another delivery coming later on today, which you'll be able to see next week. So these are the greens, which I think are really lovely, actually. Um, let's move this out the way. So we've got a little bit more space. Now, I'm going to pop that one up there as well. I do like that. I love that bright pink that's in there. I'm kind of, I'm feeling, I'm feeling the pinks this summer. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Right, let's move that one up the back there. So, next kind of colour story we've got going on. I've kept the pink here because actually I think this looks rather nice all together. Now, this is an interesting fabric an English wool suiting. So if you wanted something that was a little bit smarter, maybe if you are going back into the office now, this I think would be a perfect fabric to use. It's really nice to work with. It's quite stable. It doesn't have any stretch. So actually it makes it a little bit easier to work with. Um, but it has that lovely kind of substantial kind of weightiness to it. And I think this would be absolutely perfect in a pinafore dress and I've put it with it's almost like um it is a grey but it has a bluey kind of undertone to it which is really nice actually and I think it looks really quite funky with the with the pink 
I like pink. What is it about pink at the moment? Um, let's have a quick look and see. I don't want to miss any more comments. Um, let's have a quick look. Oh, we've dropped the inches off our sizing. <laughs> Helen, yes, we have. We have, I'm afraid. We are um, in the... 21st century I dare say I hate to say it but it makes it so much easier and it means that um, the trouble when we're trying to do the inches and centimeters calculation thing the conversion it never quite works out and it's so much easier to work everything out in centimeters because we sell fabric in centimeters or meters as well so I'm really sorry about that um, there's roughly two and a half centimeters per inch so I hope that makes a difference. Otherwise, I tend to hold it out on my tape measure, see where the centimetres are and look where the inches are. And hopefully you can get a kind of a rough guide that way. Um, it also means that because we've redesigned our packaging slightly and it just looks a little bit cleaner without all of the numbers in there. So I hope you'll forgive us for that one. But if people really, really want to see the inches come back, then obviously we will make that work and make that happen. But give it a go and see what you think. Um, morning, Donna. Hello. How are you? Uh, wanting pink is because we want sunshine, says Tina. After the grey winter, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, Donna says you prefer inches too. I know, I know. Maybe we're going to have to backtrack on this, but we want to give you a go. We want to kind of just gently push you into um, doing something a little bit different, hopefully. Uh, Granny Linda says, says, just printing out my pattern now. Oh, thank you. That's lovely. Brilliant. Now, another fabric that works with this kind of slightly bluey dark grey is the lovely I think it's called Four Eyes. I can't remember no what's it no speaking of four eyes. <laughs> no it's not called four eyes. What's it called? Let me see. Where normally a name on it. Sharon will know. Sharon will know what it's called. Um it's the lovely one that Sharon made her snug T shirt in. And, um <laughs> yeah, I can hear her laughing upstairs at the delay now. <laughs> And I think it's brilliant. Actually, I think that would look beautiful with that. I want to call it Specky Four Eyes, but I know it's not it's that fabric. Not. No, <laughs> I shouldn't say that, oh, really, should not. I? Um, oh, lovely. Ah, they're readers. Readers. That's what it's called. There we are. I knew it was something. Not that. <laughs> oh, dear. Donna said, I'm slowly getting used to not having inches. I know. It's a bit of a tricky one, isn't it? Yeah. OK, so, so centimetres are so much easier to work with, especially when you're pattern cutting. Trying to work out increments of inches is just a total pain. It really is. And it's really interesting because I've been um, I follow some American pattern cutters and they decimalise inches. So they'll do uh, 0.25 inches. Which is a bit weird. So I kind of think it's far easier to stick to centimetres. Just makes it easier. And you can count on your fingers as well. So it's easy, easier. Let's have a look. Oh, how easy is it to grade up from the waist to the hips on the perdita? Really easy because you've got all of sizes nested on your pattern. You just basically just follow the tram lines. Again, put, your, put your bodice and your skirt patterns together, overlap them. So draw your seam allowance on at the waist, overlap them. And then you can go from, I don't know, a 12 to a 14 on the hip or something like that. Just very gently, just grade it out. It's a very, very easy one to do. So you should be absolutely fine with that. Um, oh, Christian said, you do what I say and use the tape measure to inches to centimeters two inches. Ah, oh, there we go. So that's good. Uh, Maria said, uh, love the glasses one. I have it to make a regan if you need more time. I know. I know there's not enough hours in the day either for sewing. We just need to give up work, really. I feel like that sometimes. <laughs> give up work and just do sewing. It'd be lovely. Um, I really like those. Now, I've got a couple of our sweater knits out because I think a fabulous outfit would be a pair of the Robin leggings. You've got your Perdita, a snug T-shirt. And then all you need at the moment, because it is still a little bit chilly, is you want a quince cardi over the top. So actually, as an outfit, I think that just works so nicely. It's one of those things that you kind of look a little bit smart if you're at work, but actually it's quite nice and comfy as well. So we've included a few fabrics here that would make up really nicely into the quince cardi. Now, I love this. This is one of our cable knits, and I think that 
as well would be really lovely. It's heavy enough to kind of feel like a proper cardigan kind of thing, but it's not difficult to work with at all. Um, and the little bands around the neck and the front would work out brilliantly because you can just follow one of the cables for that. And that would be really lovely, actually. Um, oh, Jan says, you've got new ones. No, actually, Jan, talking about specs, I have three pairs of specs now. So these are my intermediate specs. So I've got my black ones, which are my distance. I've got these ones so I can see the computer. And then I have these ones for reading. I know. I, know. I need to get them all on chains around my neck, don't I, really? Um, there we are. Right. Uh, oh, hello. Nicole, normally I need an FBA. Will I need to do this or is the bodice a little bit more forgiving? I think, Nicole, try it first. As I said earlier, just look up the front part, the bodice section of the Perdita and try that first. You don't have to make up the whole thing unless you really want to. In fact, it's probably a good idea too, to be honest. Um, but that way you can double check. Now, there is a bust start here and it goes, it curves over the bust rather than just having it finishing on the edge of the bust there. I just think it gives it a nicer, slightly nicer shape over the front of the bust there. So you could do an FBA if you wanted to. You probably won't need to though twirl it up and see how you go that's the only that's the best bit of advice i can give you really um and isn't your advice to always make a twirl first i think so but then i know sometimes you just want to rush into a project don't you and i do get that i do get that because i'm a bit like that myself but actually it does make it much easier because hopefully you won't want to just make the pattern up once you'll want to make it up again and again so if you get that fit right first by pulling it up now, a lot of people will make a wearable toile. So if you've got fabric that you don't mind if it goes a little bit wrong, you can use that to, to make up your toile first and then get that fit sorted before launching into needle cord and stuff like that. So I hope that works. Um, also, <laughs> I, think, I love the fact we've kind of, we've got into a conversation here about centimetres. <laughs> Are they the instrument of the devil? I don't know. Um, but I love this. This is great. And I think that works really nicely with the readers, not the specky four eyes, the readers. I can say that because I am a specky four eyes. Um, well, six or eight, eight eyes. Eight eyes, yes. Yeah. Right, let's get onto some more fabric. Let's move and put that out the way. And I will move this one as well. So we can... There we are. So I love that. And actually, I'm going to leave that there for a sec because I'm going to put it with the next one and I think it's going to work really nicely as well. Let me just pop that up there. You need muscles working here. You really do. Um, so now again, this is black denim. This is a really nice, it's a good weight, actually. It's fairly, no, it's got a lot of dressing in it. It will soften up when you wash it. And I would always pre-wash denim because it will shrink just a teeny bit. But this would make up beautifully into the Perdita. And you could get... Now, we haven't got any. Maybe we need to get some, Sharon, if you're listening. Uh, we need to get some denim buttons. Because, actually, I think a denim one made up with some denim buttons and loads of lovely top stitching would look fantastic. And I think it works really nicely with the heathered marl jersey that we've got here. Now this is lovely, it's got that kind of grey undertone going through it, so it works beautifully with the black denim. They are absolutely a match made in heaven, they really are, they work really nicely. And then if you've got a quince cardi in that over the top, then we've got plain black, but just a pair of black leggings, because let's face it, you can never have too many pairs of black leggings. And I think you've got a whole outfit there, I think that works really nicely actually. I love that. We've also got oh, the black needle cord. Now, again, this is the same fabric as the, um, as the forest green and the grey that we've got here. And this just lends itself to kind of pinafores, really, it does. Um, the only thing that you want to be aware of if you're working with corduroy or needle, whether it's needle cord or jumbo cord like this, is that you might want to have a little bit more fabric because you've got to make sure that all your pattern pieces are facing in the same direction. 
because if you stroke the fabric it's got a nap to it so you don't want to kind of it to feel one side's going nice and smooth and the other side's going a bit rough not only does it feel a bit odd but it also catches the light now that's the most important thing a little bit like velvet where if you have it the pile going down it has a little bit of a sheen to it but if the pile goes up it looks a lot more matte so you can kind of decide which way around you want it. I tend to have the pile going down because it just feels nicer as you kind of stroke the fabrics. So that's something that you want to think about. Oh, brilliant. Sharon's popping up all of the fabrics. So that's great. Now, I think this is a really nice little kind of colour story here, actually. I think it's lovely. Now, another fabric that works really nicely with this are the rainbows. We need a little bit of rainbow, don't we, going on at the moment. She's got a little bit fluffy, but we'll get that off. Um, and this picks out, actually, I think this would go beautifully with the cable knit because it has got just that little bit of kind of purple and lilac going through it. But I think that's really fun. Having this underneath a, a black denim or corduroy perdita, I think would be amazing. Oh, did I miss a comment there? How much extra would I need to get the nap running in the same way? Um, do you know, off the top of my head, I can't actually remember. Email us and we can let you know. But I would need to, I can't picture the lay plan in my head at the moment. It won't be a huge amount, um, probably another quarter of a metre or something. It just depends on way, which way we round we've, we've put things. Um, it could be that all you need to do is just flip a pattern piece over and that would work just as well. So Mel, email us. And we can get back to you with the right fabric quantity for that. Um, there we go. So another nice little colour story here, which would work really nicely. So I'm going to pop these ones all to one side. Actually, and I'm going to start pushing. This is where I have to get my oh, muscles out now. Start pushing all the fabrics down. So we can move some of these to the back. I do love this denim actually. It um, works beautifully for Porsche trousers as well. If you are thinking of doing a pair of wide legged jeans, this is ideal. Now what jeans, actually jeans making is one of the workshops that we're going to have to start rescheduling. Now we've already had a few emails about workshops and we are, oops, in the process of working out when we're going to be able to re, re kind of organize those again hopefully it won't be too long but it looks like it won't be until after may the 17th because that's when we're able to get groups of people inside again at the moment they're being very cautious about letting people meet indoors so hopefully we'll have some news for you very soon if you have booked a workshop and we have postponed you we will be in touch next week to try and work out new dates so bear with us and we'll get that sorted let's move these forwards i'm getting work out today right now next color story now i love this this is one of our british wools and i think this would make up again beautifully in a pinafore dress it's lovely. It's kind of grey, but it has got blue, very dark kind of Air Force blue in there. And it's got this lovely kind of dark, almost wine red, but not quite. It is definitely a red. But this would be lovely, actually. It's a beautiful fabric. It's wool, so you would need to be careful how you care for it. Um, you could probably hand wash it and let it dry naturally rather than dry cleaning it. Um, Kathleen, do you sell fabric in quarter metres? We don't, I'm afraid, Kathleen. Everything we do is half a metre because we're more doing, we kind of do more dressmaking fabrics. And so we do it by half metre increments. So I hope that helps. Uh, have we got any other questions? Have I missed anything? No, I think we're okay. So I think, oh. Question here from Boothy's mum. Mm -hmm. Interesting Instagram name. Uh, would the Perdita work without a bus start? Um, you could. Now, the reason we've done it with a bus start is because we've curved it. We've made a tighter kind of...
kind of armhole shape. Um, you could, if you wanted to, get rid of that, but you would have to kind of get rid of it somewhere else, if you see what I mean. Um, you don't really notice the bust art that much. It just gives you a little, it just makes sure you've got a bit of a wider bib going across the front of your chest, really. So you could, but you'd have to swing out the dart and move it somewhere else. So it depends on what you want to do with it, really. So I hope that answers. Uh, morning, Diane. Hello. Uh, don't worry. If you've joined, you can catch up later on YouTube. We have got the new pattern out. Yes. Uh, fabric <laughs> Luanne says, my fabric taste leans towards overgrown toddler these days. <laughs> I would go with rainbows and lipstick pink. I think you absolutely should. There's nothing wrong with looking like a children's TV presenter. I think that's a really good look, actually. And I think when people see you, they will smile. And that's a really lovely thing to be able to do. So go for it, Luanne, go for it. Um, this is a beautiful fabric. Again, it would make up a bit more of a smarter kind of perdita. So you might want to think about the kinds of things that you want to put with it. I think it would be lovely with the navy, plain navy underneath it would look really, really nice. And now I've put it next to the red and white. I probably wouldn't put those two together. Nothing to say you could if you wanted to. Um, or even a dark grey. Actually, what you could do as well is make a nice... A kind of an Imogen actually would work quite nicely underneath as a blouse, which I think would work really well. So you could have that sitting underneath your Perdita too, which is another alternative. Um, and a nice linen one of those underneath your wool um, Perdita could look rather smart actually. Quite liking that one. Let's pop that over there. Now we've got grey denim. Now this is rather a nice one. It has got a little bit of stretch to it as well. So again, this is slightly lighter in weight than the black denim that I showed you earlier. Um, oh, Luanne says the jeans workshop is totally amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really glad you enjoyed that. Um, but I quite like the red and the grey together. I think they look rather nice. Now I could move that back over with the kind of grey and the yellow section, but I wanted something in here just to kind of show you. The red and white stripe looks quite nice with the um, with the grey denim. I think that works really well. I also really like it. I like that whole kind of. I quite like a one colour look. Sometimes it can look quite funky. I think um, I'm going to move the grey denim out the way. I'm going to pop that up the back there just so that you can see it with everything else as well. Now this is a cotton stretch. Now again, it's got a tiny bit of elastic in there, or elastane rather, a bit of stretch. But this would be a lovely, a really nice perdita actually. Again, you could pop it with some navy leggings and a little white t-shirt in, um, in just a white jersey. Equally, I think it looks quite fun with um, the red and white stripe. Now I must admit, I've got a red and white stripe snug on my cutting table at the moment waiting to be made up when I eventually get some time. Um, and I fully intend on wearing that underneath my denim one, which is rather cool. Uh, brilliant. Sharon's popping up all the links in there, which is really good. Uh, Catherine says, oh, loving the Perdita. Thank you. Uh, Kate Evans says, I think I need one in wool, denim and linen all year round dress. I think you absolutely do. Yes. And that's the beauty of making your own clothes, isn't it? You're not restricted to what you can find in the shops. If you like a particular style, you can make it in whatever fabrics you want. And then you've got it all year round, which is fabulous. Um, so, yes, this is a really gorgeous fabric. I think that is lovely. Um, it, is, it has a little bit of stretch to it, but you don't need to worry about using ballpoint needles or anything like that. It would still work absolutely fine with normal sewing needles. Now, the blues. This is by far the biggest section because most people really like to wear blue, which is fabulous. Now, um, again, what I've done is I've got a very simple. Now, this is our bog standard eight ounce denim. It's a beautiful fabric. It really is nice. I've made loads of different things up in this and it washes really nicely because it does fade a bit, which is really nice. So I would pre-wash it and I would wash it separately or just wash it with dark fabrics because the colour will come out eventually. But that means that you get certain wearing in certain places. So across the top 
here, especially if you're doing top stitching, which is why denim is so wonderful for top stitching. You get that ridge of seam and that's where you get the wear and the slight fading in the fabric, which gives it that kind of authentic sort of look, which is really nice. Um, Helen says, <laughs> looking forward to getting the new pad and the pink fabric fell into your basket. Who knew? Who knew that was going to happen? Um, Tina says, I'd love a pair of comfy handmade jeans. Yes, it, the jeans making course is a really nice one to do, actually. Um, I'm looking forward to doing that again when we can get everybody back into the studio. But a denim perdita, I think, would be the next best thing to a pair of homemade comfy jeans. Um, we've paired it here. Now, I quite like this. This is a, a slightly French navy stripe so it's a almost like a mismatch but i think it works because quite frankly anything goes with denim doesn't it really i think that looks really rather nice equally you could just have a white t-shirt underneath and i think that would work just as well um, and i've also popped it with our navy sweater knit now this is the double one so a quince cardi in this would go over everything, to be honest, and I think it would be absolutely gorgeous. This is not difficult to work with at all. It's a really lovely fabric and it has that kind of drape and softness to it, which is absolutely lovely. I really like this. In fact, I may be making one for myself again if I get time. Um, but I love that. I think that works really nicely. So we've got those together. Now, again, I popped the plain navy here because again that is just a staple really a pair of navy leggings or a navy snug t-shirt is going to go under anything that you want to put it with really um luann says we could all with a jumpsuit top and leggings combined to go under perdita absolutely you could have one like one of those like was it a combination set where you've got your with your buttons up at the back to get your flap down and stuff like that that's what we need isn't it really isn't a, baby grow? a baby grow yeah sometimes i feel like i need one of those as well actually yeah <laughs> um right i'm going to move those out the way so we've got room for some other ones Probably not. Sharon will probably have to reorganise and sort me out a bit later. I'm just, I'm just shoving them out of the way for the minute. Um, let's move these out the way. So we've got a bit more space. Um, now, the other thing that I did want to talk to you about, and someone has highlighted to me at the moment, but applications for the diploma are open. Now, at the moment, you can click on a form and that will be your application form. I just need to double check the settings because apparently it's private at the moment. But as soon as I come off the live, I'm going to flick the switch and make sure that the application is live. So if you are interested in the diploma, you should be able to have a look over on in the studio. If you go along the top menu, there is the diploma. Now, if you click on that, it will give you a lot more information about the diploma, what's included and how we're going to run it. And at the bottom, you've got a link for an application form. I will make sure that that application form link works as soon as we come off of here, but at least you've got lots more information about the diploma. And uh, we're going to be starting that in May. So we've got a little bit of a lead in there. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get people into the studio, but at the first, probably the first one or two sessions will be online only. And there is also an online option. So you could join the diploma and um, but join us remotely but there's lots more information over on the website so do have a look at that there is an FAQ at the bottom of the page so if you've got any questions have a look and see if the FAQs answer that if not you can then email us and we'll try and sort everything out for you Charlie was just taking a big <gasps> as if he was about to say something then uh, what if people aren't in the Studio no, nope, it's there. Finder. Yeah, you can see it just on the on the home page of the sewing studio. So you don't have to be a member of the sewing studio. You can just hop over onto the sewing studio website and the information is there. Just click on the top menu bar where it says send me something diploma. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's good. Uh, let's have a look. And the other thing is, is it is a nationally recognised qualification. Yes, it is. Not just you made it up. No, it isn't. It's a proper job thing. It is a proper job thing. Now, um, I'm going to do a separate video about the diploma, but I just wanted to let you know that it's there. 
you can get information and you will be able to apply as soon as I come off the live today. Um, it is a nationally recognised qualification. Um, a lot of people have said, oh, can I do it? But don't, I, don't, I don't need to get the qualification. You can. The qualification is there because of the hoops that we've had to jump through in order to make sure that the uh, teaching content is there, the assessment is there, and it's also recognition for your hard work, really. So whether or not you want to use it as a nationally recognised qualification to do something with it um, or not is entirely up to you. But um, we felt that actually having that support behind the of the the support of the award or the awarding body was giving it that kudos and making it you know something really special to be able to do so even if you don't want to if you're not bothered about getting a qualification out of it it's that level of teaching and that level of knowledge and understanding that you will gain from doing the diploma and we think that that needs to be rewarded so having a proper certification um, is what's going to make it different from just a normal sewing course so i hope that makes sense um, but as i said more information on the Sewing Studio website if you want to have a little look. And in case anyone, I know, blah, 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 blah. in case uh, anyone doesn't know, you used to be a fashion lecturer. I was so a fashion you, lecturer in a previous life, you yes. You only know the stuff, you know how to teach the stuff. Yes, yes. I have a PGCE, um, I spent 10 years as a lecturer, I've written degree courses, I've written BTEC courses, um, we've done assessment and all of that kind of stuff. So this is a proper job thing, actually, and I'm really quite proud of it. I don't normally get excited about stuff, but I'm actually quite excited about this. And as I'm writing the course, I'm thinking, oh, do you know, I quite fancy doing this myself, actually. It'd be quite good fun. So there's, uh, as with lots of designing and pattern cutting, there's lots of cutting and sticking involved because we're going to do it old school so it's actually quite good fun and I think I hope I'm hoping you're going to really enjoy it uh there we go right so oh Rotha says sorry I missed you today just oh, annual work evaluation oh no I hope it's going well but don't worry you can always catch up and join us later so that's really good Debbie says yes diploma Debbie we're waiting we're waiting for you to come and join us um, Maria says, do you have buttons that go with the Perdita and where does the name come from? Perdita, she's another one of our Shakespearean heroines. The name actually means lost one, did you know? Oh, but there you course, go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, French. Yeah, there we go. Um, uh, Catherine says, does Perdita have darts? She has bust darts, little bust darts there, which are very hidden. You don't really notice them, but they just give you, rather than giving you that kind of flat dungaree sort of shape. Zoom. There we go. They give you a little bit more shaping over the bust. So I think it stops you looking quite so wide uh, or broad in the beam as well. Um, yes. Uh, Linda, the diploma is for a calendar year. So start May this year and finish April next year. Uh, but as I said, loads more information on the website so um oh anita says last live for me back to school next week oh don't worry anita you'll be able to catch up later you'll be able to watch us live on youtube or watch us on youtube later um oh there we go look i've only seen that co comment and sharon's on the ball already popped up the link for the quince cardigan there we go no flies on sharon this morning that's really good um right let's get rid of these two and we can show you some more and I'm going to pop the denim down. So this is another really lovely fabric. So this is the navy version of the jumbo cord. So we've got it in four colours. We've got um, grey, black, navy and the lovely forest green. And they all go with lots of different things, which is brilliant. Um, oh, Donna, is the diploma higher than a GCSE grade one? It's interesting, Donna. The way that we've done it, we've kind of... I won't say we've set the bar low because that's not, that, that gives it the wrong kind of connotation. But what we've done is we've set it as a level two. So a level two is equivalent to GCSE grade C or above, I think. Uh, it's about that kind of level. And what we wanted to do was to kind of get people and introduce them so that uh, you kind of understand the concepts of what we want to do on the diploma. But we're not overloading you with loads of really kind of brain achy kind of stuff. 
And then what we want to be able to do, if this is a success and people are enjoying what we're doing, we'd like to be able to then go up to a level three. Now, at the moment, there isn't a level three in any of the units that we're covering. So we would actually have to write that course. I would have to do that myself, which I'm more than happy to do. But we wanted to try it out at level two first, just to make sure that everyone's happy, it works. We know people can get the work done. They're understanding what's involved and things like that. So this is a little bit of a, we've kind of jumped through lots of hoops in order to make this happen. And I'm hoping that primarily people are going to enjoy it, actually, because that's what it's all about. Um, and it will be looking at things like design theory, working out the styles that work for you, um, as well as the technical stuff um, with pattern cutting and draping and a bit of textile manipulation, which is all kinds of different stuff, actually, and quite cool. A bit of tailoring involved. Um, and I think, yeah, overall, it should give you a fairly broad good knowledge of designing and producing clothes. So I'm hoping that's what it's all about. Um, but to answer your question, it's roughly level two at the moment. So it's probably GCSE. I don't even know what they are now. Are they, no, it's one to whatever, isn't it? But it's, yeah, it's a good GCSE. So that's roughly where we're, where we're at, where we're naming. Numbers are limited, Rowena. We're waiting at the moment just to see how many people apply um, because we can cope with a few more people online in the studio so overall we just want to see how many people are applying how many people are interested um, because I know a lot of people kind of think oh yeah that'd be cool but when it comes to it and the commitment involved to it and it might not be right for everybody so we just want to see who's applying first and how many people actually want to be involved and then we'll be able to work out how many we can cope with at any one time now it may be that we start it in May and it's running beautifully. Um, and we may do another cohort um, starting in January 22. Um, and we kind of run the two levels concurrently sort of thing. I don't know how it's going to work yet. We need to suck it and see. Hopefully it will be OK. So if we can't fit everybody into the first group, we will be running a second group later on in the year. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, let's have a quick look. Oh, there we go. Brilliant. That I think I've caught up. There we go. Um, that's uh, brilliant, lovely. So, uh, oh, we've got another question. Mary e. Scott says on it's just so lovely to be able to join you. Love your makes and fabric. Oh, thank you. It's uh, really nice to have you on board today. Um, and Haberdash Rene says, uh, 30 years ago I did a city and guilds course. Is it the same type of course? Um, kind of, but not. So this is... Um, from what I can gather, I haven't done a city and guilds and I haven't taught a city and guilds. It's, um, I can't really compare the two, but this one, you will be uh, looking at uh, a bit of creative development. So you'd be looking at sketchbook stuff. So recording your ideas. Don't panic if you're not into drawing or anything like that. We can give you croquis and templates and stuff like that to work with. A lot of the designing that people do is on flats or as flats, which are just little kind of drawings of the garment with all the design details and seam lines and stitching and stuff like that involved. Um, a lot of it is understanding your own abilities as well and creating the clothes that you want to wear. Um, so it isn't about fulfilling um, a brief to meet for, you know, just to tick boxes kind of thing. It is about making clothes that you want to wear. And during that process, you'll be learning loads of different stuff so it's slightly like a I suppose it's a bit the nearest equivalent is to a BTEC but it isn't quite a BTEC either because we've kind of bracketed it around doing different projects if you see what I mean have a look on the website there's a lot more information there um, and then if you've got any specific questions do email us or have a look at the FAQs at the bottom of the page on the website because everything should be We've tried to cover everything. Obviously, we won't have covered everything because there will always be questions that we haven't thought of the answers to yet. Um, but if you do want anything, just email us and we'll get back to you and let you know. So, um, Bethan, the diploma. No, what we're going to do is, and I will give you the reasons for this. Um, I have worked weekends and evenings for the last 30 odd years. And during lockdown, it's actually really made me reevaluate the way I work. 
because I've had evenings and weekends off and it has been an absolute joy. It really has. I've worked my arse off over the last nine years that we've had the business getting it up and running to this point. And to be honest, I don't really want to work evenings and weekends anymore. I've got to that point where I quite like to have a little bit of downtime. So what we're doing is the diploma is going to be on um, a Friday and a Saturday. So those are going to be our taught days and we're going to do that once a month. Now, again, you can join us remotely. So you will be able to join in a live session while we're here or teaching or doing whatever we're doing in the studio. Those are going to be recorded and we will be putting those into the sewing studio section or the diploma section of the sewing studio website. So even if you can't join us at that particular time, um, or you can't join us for that day, you can catch up because the whole of that day will be recorded um, and you'll be able to dip in and out of it. And what we'll try and do is to make sure that certain aspects are highlighted so that you know the date time kind of thing of what bits you need to follow. So um, while we want to try and get and make it as easy for as many people as possible to join, I'm having to be a little bit careful about how I work. Um, and doing a Friday and a Saturday, I'm hoping we'll be um, able to get most people on board. Now, there is a lot of work that you're going to have to do on your own. And that is going to require a bit of commitment. So um, you are going to need to do to kind of separate off your own working space, which you could do evenings and weekends if you wanted to. Um, and then we're going to do Zoom support as well throughout the, um, the month. So you'll have Zoom calls. And they'll be within small groups and possibly individually just to give you the support that you need whilst you're working at home as well. I hope that makes it a little bit clearer. Again, email us if you want any more information. Um, oh, there we go. There, Sharon's popped up the link. There we go. Everything is on there. Do have a look at the website because we've tried to answer as many questions as we possibly can. So I hope that makes sense. Back to the fabric. Needle jumbo cord, corduroy fabrics. Um, that is where we're at at the moment. Uh, again, I'm going to do another live probably later on this week where I'm just going to talk about the diploma. So I think we'll probably just, if, we, if I look at all the questions that are coming up at the moment, and then hopefully I'll be able to answer those later. But I am aware that we've got a few more fabrics to get through today. So, Needle cord, again, jumbo cord, works really nicely. Now, this is the same fabric that we've used for our snug T-shirt here, um, which is brilliant. Um, oh, thank you. Oh, good. People are... <laughs> I was worried a bit of me going off on a bit of a diatribe about having much to protect my own kind of like work-life balance. But I'm hoping you do understand that. We've worked really, really hard. And doing, you know, I don't really want to work all day here and then teach in the evenings anymore because um, 12, 14 hour days are a bit of a long one for me. But anyway, back to the fabrics. Um, I must admit, I've got a T-shirt waiting again on my cutting table because I really love stripes um, to make up in this as well. But I think this would work really nicely with the navy and I think that would be brilliant. So you've got some nice combinations there as well. Sharon's sticking up all the links again, which is fantastic. Now, this is our salt water stream. Um, and again, I think this is a really lovely one. We've made leggings out of this um, as part of the loungewear range. Um, but they are brilliant because they sit perfectly underneath your perdita. So whether you want to wear them with... Um, now, I would obviously wear them with DMs because I wear DMs with everything. But you probably have a larger range of choice at home. So you might want to put some Converse with it or some Brogue. Some nice. Um, so I think that's a really nice way of mixing and matching different garments too. So, oh, we've got, we do have a bit of navy needle cord. Now, this is a stretch one. So it has a little bit of give to it there. So this would work really nicely as well. Now we're trying to get hold of some other colours in this and it is proving a little bit difficult at the moment, but bear with us because we're hoping that it should be here fairly soon, which will be good. So if I move these ones forwards and pop these ones behind. There we go. So this is the fabric that we've made the sample up in 
Now, grey and yellow, I think it's a lovely combination. I really do. I love this. Um, and I think they work really nicely together. Um, this is lovely. It's a very sunshiny colour, isn't it? I think this would work brilliantly with the needle cord. Or you could put it with the um, grey denim, actually. Earlier. And that would work really nicely too. We've got grey stripe. Now again, I think the whole colour looks quite nice, but then you've got, you could have some really nice poppy kind of bright colour jewellery that if you want to put with it, and I think that would work really nicely as well. Or, now we've got lovely mustard yellow in the cable knit. Now this would be ideal, absolutely ideal, um, to make a quince cardigan to go over the top. So if you've got, or now if you've got, I can't remember. Sharon, you'll have to tell me the answer to this. I can't remember whether you've got yellow snag tights, but a lovely pair of bright coloured tights underneath a grey um, perder to pinafore would look amazing, wouldn't it, actually? She'll stick the answer up in a minute. Um, let's have a quick... Love yellow, says Linda. Oh, perfect. Brenda says, you're not alone in the lockdown course thinking, rethinking life. I know, exactly. It has given us all a bit of a time to kind of pause and just work out what we want to do and which parts of the rat race we want to allow back into our lives, which I think is quite important, actually. There was an image in by Good Things that was actually shared by Claire, Claire Louise. Oh, yeah. Her Insta, yeah. all about that. So do have a look at yes. Thrifty Stitcher. Have a look at the Thrifty Stitcher. That's my mate CL, Claire Louise. Um, we are hoping to be able to run the retreats again this year, but more about that later. Um, and also check out Charlie's Five Good Things. He does an email every week, which comes out on a Sunday morning, and it's just five things that make you smile. Um, you can have a look and sign up to Charlie's newsletter. Where is it? The Tall Photographer. Yeah. So if you go over to the tallphotographer.co.uk, yeah. that's Charlie's website. Um, and it's a little kind of missive that goes out on a Sunday morning, and it's rather lovely. If you want something to brighten up your weekend, I can thoroughly recommend it. It usually has something that's slightly irreverent and mildly amusing, um, but they are always very interesting. So give that a check out. Um, plain grey. That's a bit of a must as well, isn't it, really? Um, I think that works really nicely. So again, you could have underneath your corduroy, which would work really well. Um, and I've got this one. Now, this is one of your favourites. I can't remember what it's called. She'll put the link up in it and tell me what it's called. North Star Serene. There we are. So this would be really nice, actually, underneath a grey denim. I think that would work really nicely. It has this almost, it's like a very pale O'Neill kind of greeny colour, which is rather nice, actually. I think that's lovely. But we've just had back in again our grey double knit, um, double sweater knit. So this is lovely. This is similar to the ones that I showed you earlier on. Um, and it's absolutely gorgeous. To be honest, you could probably buy... Uh, a two metre length of this and just wear it as a massive great big scarf because it's just so gorgeous and just wrap yourself up in it totally. I quite like the idea of doing that actually. What you could do would be to add some coloured pom-poms onto the cut edges and just finish it off and you've just got a beautiful lovely long kind of shawly scarf which would be oh, great. Oh no Charlie's, Charlie's looking at the pom-poms now. Focusing in on we all need brightness. In, we in our all lives. need. Uh, and there oh, you are, gratuitous pom poms. <laughs> That's what we need—a bit of gratuitous pom poms. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, oh, Rachel says I love the bird song thing from the last five good things. I know it was brilliant, isn't it? Mm. Oh, lots of people are sharing the love for your five good things oh, on here, well, thank you. which is brilliant, actually. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that's fantastic. Oh, well, good. I'm really. Mel, has, Mel Hutchings has said I've just signed up for Charlie's emails. Oh. That's lovely. Tina said, they make me smile too. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, she got a lovely Charlie Mackesee t-shirt. Nose day. Oh, I love Charlie Mackesee. That book is just amazing, isn't it? If anybody doesn't know it, it's called um, The Boy, the Horse, the Fox and the Mole, isn't it? Or The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse. I think, yeah. 
And it is just the most beautiful collection of drawings by this guy called Charlie Mackesy, who is just amazing. Um, and Charlie's put, there's a link to um, an interview, wasn't it? An yeah. American, yeah, American interview that Charlie did. Well, this, this guy, Charlie, not Charlie, the other Charlie, um, did in, about the book. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. It really is. It's or, lovely. Or, although the interview might make you It cry. probably will make you cry, actually, did me. Yeah. Because I'm a sucker for things like that, totally. <laughs> I cry at NSPCC adverts and my kids take the mickey out of me all the time. But there we go. Uh, all other people are loving the book as well, actually. Oh, yeah. Yes, Jackie, his illustrations are beautiful, aren't they? That is lovely. Oh, I'm just making sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, Sharon Hadaway on Instagram says, every time you say Sharon, I think you're talking to me. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I know, I've got Sharon upstairs and she's like typing away, adding all the links in. And I can hear her chuckling when I've gone... A bit, but there's a delay sometimes, which is quite interesting. Um, so I think... That's everything for this week, actually. We've got lots of fabrics here. Uh, we've focused on only a few patterns um, because obviously we want to make sure that we're showcasing the Perdita today. Um, but I hope you give her a go. It's a really nice one to make and wear. Uh, and it works beautifully with lots of different things as well. So we've put it with the snug T-shirt. But equally, it would look great with, um, you could put a viscose, a rayon Regan underneath it, which would look lovely. Um, it would equally work, oops, with a peas, just a little short sleeve boxy t-shirt. That would be really cute under there as well. Um, give it a go. If you're not sure about the fit, always make a toile up first. If you want to, you can use a wearable toile or make a wearable toile, which is a nice way of getting two garments for the price of one kind of thing. Um, do enjoy that. If you want info more information about the diploma, have a look at the Sewing Studio website. If you've got any questions, email us, but do have a look at the FAQs first. Um, and I'm going to go right over now and make sure that the application is live so you can do that. Um, and hopefully we will see you again next week. Um, I don't know quite what the weather's doing today. It's a bit cloudy, but hopefully the sunshine's on its way. If you've got any questions, email us and hopefully we'll see you next time. Take care.